Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I'm here, beautiful Glenshaw, Pennsylvania. Sunny. Looks like there was some rain. Pretty awesome. There's this gorgeous hydrangea. I bought for Kendall a couple of years ago. It didn't come back last year, it didn't bloom. Then she read about how to prune it, how not to prune it. And now this year it came back like crazy. She did a great job. All right. Good to see Nick James following. Nick James, I'll be checking out your videos today. Thanks. See you later. Hey, it's Rick. We're gonna continue with uh, vlog number three. I made it to three. This is great. So I'll talk about my uh, musical influences, um, as was suggested by some of my predecessors here. Um, as I might have mentioned before, my father was a musician, primarily a jazz musician, but. He got a lot of the gigs around town, um, you know, playing for whether it be the circus or the ice capades or whatever national act was coming into town and hiring people from the musicians union. And so he always had great music in the house, um, lots of classical and jazz that I would listen to. And he also had Beatle records in his record collection. He didn't ever admit that they were his. So I found them and started playing them. I was about seven years old, right around the time I got my first guitar. Uh, so there were two Beatle records. There was Something New and Meet the Beatles. And those were the capital versions. In England, it would have been With the Beatles and uh, I forget what else. Anyway. Maybe Hard Day's Night, a lot of those songs were on something new. And a lot of them were singles that were released in England. But here in the U.S., Capitol uh, Records decided that they would make more money by splitting everything up into more records. So anyway, I really got into those two albums as a little kid, and I would play them and play them. In fact, I remember sitting with my guitar thinking that I was learning them, but really I was just making a bunch of noise. Uh, just picking notes here and there. I probably ended up landing a few. Um, around that same time, you know, I had three older brothers. I still, to this day, have three older brothers. And um, they had great taste in music, too. And so I was always sneaking and playing their records. Um, uh, things like, of course, Led Zeppelin. Um, you know, uh, Ted Nugent. Uh was there. There was um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and um, Joe Walsh, and uh, Kiss a little bit. So um, of those records, my favorites uh, were, uh, of course, Led Zeppelin I liked a lot. Uh, Deep Purple was one that I really liked. Uh, we had Machine Head. I played that a lot. I loved ZZ Top. I especially liked Leonard Skinnerd. Um, that was a huge influence on me. I used to love 
that they had three guitarists that all seemed like such cool guys. You know, really awesome long hair, and they played Les Pauls and Strats and Firebirds, and um, they were just awesome. So I loved Leonard Skinnerd, and um, I loved um, Yes. Yes was soon became my favorite band, Aside of the Beatles. And I still, to this day, you know, what's your favorite band? Well, Aside of the Beatles, it's Yes. Uh, so um, the Yes album was a huge influence. Uh, listening to Steve Howe play, listening to Christopher Squire play the bass, uh, Bill Bruford, just a fantastic album. Um, so that left a big mark on me. Uh, as I grew older, I started to listen to early 80s kind of metal, but good metal, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. Um, I did listen to Motley Crue a bit, but um, let's see what else. Uh, Ozzy, definitely listened to Ozzy a lot. Uh, so I liked that stuff. And this was when I was in my early teens, and... Uh, Richie Blackmore was really one of my favorite guitar players. I loved the stuff in Deep Purple, and I loved Rainbow. And you know, as soon as, uh, whenever Since You've Been Gone came out, I loved that song. I thought it was awesome. Um, and, you know, that was my first concert. So when I was 13 years old, my buddy Pete and I went to see Rainbow and Pat Travers at the Stanley Theater in Pittsburgh. Uh, we were way in the back row, and we were standing up on our chairs so we could see because we were short. And um, it was a smelly place with people smoking weed all around us, and um, just electric. Everybody was going nuts, and the, uh, the bands were so good. They were so good. Richie Blackmore was just amazing. So I'll never forget that. And then growing up, <clears throat> you know, Journey, I loved them. Um, you know, I started to listen to more blues, but I didn't have any blues because my brothers were all rock fans and my father was a jazz guy. So I was like, well, what do we have in the house that's blues? And I looked and I found, um, since I've been loving you by Led Zeppelin, that was blues. I was like, okay. So I, I wore that out. I listened to it a lot. Um, I listened to lazy from the deep purple record. Uh, some Pat Travers, I listened to that. Uh, ZZ Top for sure. Um, you know, Blue Jean Blues and uh, Fool for Your Stockings, that kind of stuff. Uh, I listened to Rush a lot. I loved Rush. And I started to listen to some jazz too. You know, my father had a lot of um, a lot of different jazz records. And a lot of West Montgomery, so I was I was drawn to the, the guitar playing in West Montgomery stuff. Um, so uh, definitely West Montgomery, and you know, sometime in the '80s, towards the end of the '80s, I discovered um, a guy named Larry Carlton played for Steely Dan, and I thought that was great. And I listened to him, and I bought his first few uh, solo records, and they were amazing. So Larry, Larry Carlton was a big influence on me. Um, and then I went to college for music and I listened to a bunch of uh, great guitarists there. Uh, and all my teachers were great guitarists. Um, my main teacher was Joe Negri, who was the, um, the handyman on Mr. Rogers. But if you remember, he was an amazing jazz guitarist too. So um, he's still around, played at my wedding great guy. Uh, huge influence. <clears throat> uh, as far as learning music and listening to music and appreciating music, my father by far was the biggest um, influence on me. In learning to play blues, I listened to a, uh, a lot of great artists. Um, of course, Stevie Ray Vaughan was huge and um, Robert Cray and Eric Johnson and who else well the Allman Brothers band um, so also Derek Trucks 
uh, was a big influence on me, on my playing. And, um, yeah, more recently, um, you know, I got married to a singer, and she showed me a lot of great, um, a lot of great, more artistic music based on songs. And so, you know, the guitar players who play for Holly Cole and for Nora Jones and, um, and artists like that um, are really good. And they're, they play in a way that you wouldn't expect um, to like when you're a younger guitar player. But as you get older, you see that um, these guys are not just playing chords and notes, but they're sort of creating atmospheric sound with their instruments. So that's very good stuff. Um, specifically Kevin Bright, um, you know, he's a, he's a fantastic player. So those are my influences. Still Beatles, yes. Genesis, for sure. And Neil Young. So when I was a little kid, I used to take my acoustic guitar, I had a crappy Yamaha acoustic guitar, and, um, I would take a, um, a clothes hanger and I would bend it so it fit around my neck and bend the ends of it so it would hold on to a harmonica and I would play acoustic guitar and I would play the harmonica while I played guitar and I learned Heart of Gold and Old Man and uh, that was a lot of fun comes a time um, I really love Neil Young I think Neil Young's great, great music. So those are my influences. And that's my blog for today. I went on for quite a while. I hope that you all have a great day. Uh, please subscribe. And um, peace to you. See ya.